what's up everyone? As you can see, it finally arrived after 10 months. I ordered this car November 29th, 2019. It was actually Black Friday. There was no Black Friday special for sure, but um, that's when I put my first deposit in. And there was supposed to be a 26 week lead time at that time, but COVID hit and I guess some of the suppliers got backed up at the factory a little bit, but regardless, you just sit and wait. So it's 10 months and two days, finally arrived. Set sail on September 2nd and it was dropped off in Panama and then another ship grabbed it from there and then brought it to the my home port, which is only 45 minutes away from where I live. So it did make a stop in Colombia on the way, but Unfortunately, they didn't load up any of the famous Colombian exports, so I wasn't able to recoup much of my investment, but I'm fine with it. Customs took one day. Uh, I used a guy from a company called US Consolidated Customs Brokers. His name's Brian. I could leave his contact information. I would highly recommend using him. It was a really quick process and their fees are much lower than everyone else I've looked at. What they do is they just, they import this as car parts because there's, uh, I mean, that's basically what it is. It's just, it, you can't run and drive as it sits. There's a million pieces in all these boxes. If it did come with an engine, then there's additional steps you need to take, additional forms, EPA regulations, and all that kind of stuff. So I have my engine sitting here, so there's no big deal with that. Um, but that's just something to look out for if you do actually buy an engine and have it shipped over with the car or any car. So after it got into the port, like I said, customs took one day. I don't even think they opened the container or inspected it. Then I had to arrange shipment and that was a little dicey. Down here, I'm in, I'm in South Florida and you can't just rent a truck like you used to be able to and go to the port and drive into the port and pick it up because you need special, like a Twic ID and, and other special things. So I originally tried to get a tow truck driver to just go there and pick it up but I had to call a special company and I guess it's not that special. It's just, it's just what they specialize in. So they picked up the container and I can put that on the screen now. That's what the container looks like. It's just a regular shipping container. And then we had a tow truck driver up with a flatbed back up to that truck. And I actually was the guy going in there and we used a floor jack to jack up the side of the crate and feed in some tow straps and then the flatbed truck driver winched it out onto the flatbed and then he was able to drive into my neighborhood and then he just tilted it back and then used all the hydraulics to just slowly inch it off the truck, which you can see. After that, you set it down and then you unbox it. There's no shipping manifest. There's no, there's nothing on the box. So you don't really know how to attack it other than just start unscrewing it. So the best thing that I would say to anyone who orders one of these things is to unscrew the top first and then slide that over because I made the mistake of unscrewing the side and dropping the side and there's all kinds of support beams that go on top. So now they're drooping down and they were right next to touching the body. So you can see in my time lapse where we go one by one and take off those boards and then we end up taking off the top. After that, it's just a chassis sitting there. There's all kinds of boxes that are numbered and labeled with what's inside. Then after that, the frame is just sitting there with the chassis and you call your buddies and you ask them to all help you because there's no way a single person could, could get that done without special machinery. So I had a chassis dolly already built. We wheeled it out there and I used an engine hoist that was hooked with a tow strap to the chassis and I put the engine hoist in there in one of the wheel wells and the rear wheel wells and then just hoist it up and I controlled the back of it and then my friends got on the front of it and it was pretty easy. We just walked it out onto the dolly, set it down and then I wheeled it in here and this is how it sits. This is what it looks like when you get it. So with that said, I'll probably just, I'll take you around and I'll show you what, what comes along with when you get your car shipped or an Altima shipped and then I'll show you a couple things that I'm doing to make mine unique. So check it out. So first what I'll do is I'll give you a little bit of a walk around. You can see I got the carbon fiber splitter, the, the upgraded headlights. These are uh, driving lights and a sequential turn signal. Then we've got high beams, low beams. There are little fans here that I guess cool it. 
Um, hopefully it keeps condensation out and all that. These are the optional carbon fiber wheel vents. I just mocked these up. I couldn't wait to see how they look. Took them out of the box. Here's the carbon fiber mirrors. You can actually option these mirrors or mirrors that mount to right here. And I made this last minute change and I was very thankful that the factory accommodated that. Carbon fiber side scoops. I mean, just they're, they're awesome. These things, I just mocked this up as well, but you can check them out. The carbon work is just awesome. Extremely lightweight, very easy to put on. Just kind of clip it right there. And then there's a little mounting bracket that mounts back here, but I haven't tightened that up. So just to look at, and then I'm going to take all this apart. Again, rear wheel vent, carbon fiber. Uh, you can take this off and see there's a sort of a wheel well, all fiberglass. Here is the optional rear wing. It weighs eight pounds, nine ounces. The thing's huge. It's 1,780 millimeters wide. I think the Dodge Viper ACR Extreme has a slightly wider wing, but I know the stock wing on the regular ACR is 1,776, so it's technically wider than a stock ACR wing. Uh, it's a dual element, and I just have it sitting right here. You can see that there's cutouts in the chassis, and this metal piece, you can see my finger coming underneath. This is actually the chassis. It bolts directly to it, so this wing puts direct downforce right to the chassis instead of the body. You can see I got the upgraded taillights here. These things do like a little bit of a dance when, when it starts and when they're given power. I haven't seen it yet, but I've seen it on uh, Ultima's videos. And then in here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says Ultima RS, and it looks like that's some sort of like acrylic in there that they did that with. It looks awesome. This, I had to mock up just to see, because I pulled these out of the box and they just, they're a work of art. These are, I don't know who makes these for Ultima. I'd have to jog my memory for it, but I mean, just the welds and everything are awesome on these things. The only concern of mine is that the primaries look a little small for an engine of this output. I would like to do like two inch primaries. I measured the outer diameter and it's like 1.8 inches. So inner diameter might be a little small and a little restrictive, but here is the stock GM manifold and it can't be any more restrictive than that. So these things are just like eye candy to a car guy though. It's, it's, Awesome, and I think I'm going to have these ceramic coated and Not in a traditional color. I'd like to do something kind of cool with it. Nothing crazy. They're not gonna be like orange or anything, but I Definitely like to get these ceramic coated for heat under the bonnet as they call it. I guess We call it a hood in the United States, but this doesn't look like much of a hood Here's the LT5 that I put together I'm gonna do some uh, custom valve covers and maybe a few other little things like remote plug wires and stuff to make it look pretty cool and make it look unique. So some of the things that I'm gonna be doing on this car that are gonna be a little bit different from everyone else's Altima, not everyone's, but everyone's stock Altima, is I'm going to be changing the pedal assembly. So you can see Right down there, these pedals, here's the clutch pedal, those three little, I don't know, those pieces of metal that are welded to the chassis, that's where each pedal goes. And then there's a hole for the master cylinders, the two brake master cylinders and the clutch master cylinder. The throttles drive by wire, so that just attaches to this right here. Before I do any paneling on this, I'm cutting all of that out and I'm installing this as my pedal assembly. This is a Tilton 800 series. It's all forged aluminum. It's extremely light and extremely strong. And you can see just 
you know the difference between the stock one it's a huge upgrade there's nothing wrong with these the complaint that most owners give i guess is just that there is a there's very hard pressure required to generate a lot of braking force like obviously these cars stop incredibly well but it just takes a lot of effort to do so it's not like driving a modern car that everyone's used to where you just you know hover your foot on the brake like if you've ever driven the new gt350 mustang or any even a mustang gt or a bmw they all have great braking and i guess it's just something that people aren't used to i've never driven an ultima so i can't really say what i think about it but i know that mine's gonna have this tilt and pedal assembly and this is the brake bias adjuster the two brake master cylinders go right here and the clutch master cylinder goes right here again this can be adapted to throttle by wire this is the throttle pedal obviously and here are the master cylinders that it comes with stock i wish i would have known that i wasn't going to use these to begin with but these are the stock master cylinders and then these are the tilton ones so you can just kind of see the differences between them it's it's a big difference just as far as like feel and weight and and quality these are obviously cast aluminum and then these look like they're they look like they're milled they look like they're billet so big difference in in just quality this is like total race car type stuff Another thing I'm going to do is this is the DEI Reflecta Gold that will be on the other side of this panel in the for the firewall to keep the heat out. A big issue in these cars is heat transfer. The engine is right behind this. So you need to worry about heat mitigation and, and insulation between there and here. You're sitting basically right here. So keeping the cockpit nice and cool is is huge and especially I'm in South Florida. I did option this car with AC so it'll be nice and cold in here. And here is the AIM MXS Strata dash. It's going to be all digital dash. I'm going to have no gauges on the on the dash. It's all going to be electronic. And then I got the carbon fiber dash bezel for for the aim kit all these are going back in their boxes i'm just showing you guys this so next steps are oh, also one more thing so i don't know if you can see but right down there is a brake booster and that is going to make this car have power brakes so this car is going to have all the braking power there's going to be no manual, no manual brakes on this car. So as you can see, the next steps are to remove all of these panels. You can see there's like little rivets here and there that hold certain panels on. And then those need to be drilled out so that I can remove all of these. There, there's one right there. And then once those are all taken off, then it's just a bare chassis and then I can get to paneling and then you build it. So I'm obviously doing this in a one car garage. So it's going to be a little interesting to see, but I think I'll have plenty of room once I, um, once I take all these body panels off and I have this chassis dolly, I can slide it around no problem, but thank you guys for watching and stay tuned. I'll get this thing going. Thanks.